Hi, and welcome to this week's video blog on Some Assembly Required. I'm Sarah Hammerker, and I'm so glad you joined me. Today I want to talk about modesty. I recently had a parent ask me, how do I teach modesty? Uh, they were asking about their six-year-old son, which I love because boys need to learn about modesty just as much as girls do. So what is the best way to teach modesty? How, why should we teach modesty? Is modesty an outdated idea? Um, I don't think modesty is outdated. I think we need more modesty. And modesty, um, but let's just be clear, modesty is more than clothing that you wear. Modesty is a frame of mind. And, and that's really what we want to instill in our kids. We don't want them to think that modesty has to do with how long your dress is or how short your shorts are. Those things matter, but we want to get to the underlying issue of what is modesty and why modesty is important. Unfortunately, like I said, modesty is a lost character trait, not just for boys, but for girls as well. Um, and if it's taught at all, unfortunately, it's generally restricted to females. And this is a huge mistake because boys need to learn about modesty as much as girls do. So how do we do this? How do we instill modesty in our kids? I have a couple, you'll be surprised to know, I have a couple of, of ways to do this. First, it's important to discuss your own family values in a way that's not lecturing and not critical of others. We can't control what other people wear. People are going to be immodest in a million different ways. We don't want our kids to be judging them, to be looking on them with disdain. No, we want them to have compassion for our fellow human beings and all the foibles that we have because we have those foibles and we want them to be compassionate with us. So let's let's make sure that as we're teaching modesty, it's not a them versus us. Not an us versus them, I mean. It, we, there's not an other person there that we need to counter against. No, we're talking about modesty um, in a way because we want our children to have that in their own hearts. We want them to be modest for the sake of modesty, not as a reaction to someone else. So um, conversations to have with your kids. Uh, society gives us many ways to have these conversations. People you see on the street, people they see at school, letters that come home from school, well, emails. Um, my Two of my, um, my teenage girls are in middle school and high school, and this time of year when it's warmer, we get letters, emails home reminding us that, hey, your kids may have grown. Let's watch their clothes so that things are a little more modest at school. So they, they hear about this from other people. The news, movies, TV shows, classmates, neighbors, friends, family, everything that we see around us gives us opportunities to reinforce our family values. But you have to be careful that we're not lecturing. This is not should be, well, we do it this way and we're better because of it. No, this is kind of getting into, well, why do you think it's immodest for girls to wear shorts that show their bottom? What is it about that that we we don't allow and why don't we allow? Why do we encourage you to wear clothes that covers your private areas? Those kind of questions are what we need to have discussing with our kids. As our kids, we need to have these conversations when they're young, and as they grow older, older, we add layers and layers and layers on it so that they can understand more the why, and they can make those beliefs their own, because that's crucial. If they're not believing it, really, if they're just doing it for mom and dad, then it's not going to last. So we have to kind of layer it and get that into their hearts, the reason why. I remember when my girls, um, they have long legs, and when they were in like first and second grade, um, short shorts were popular for young girls, which was shocking to me, but I'm, I'm a very conservative dresser, it's just the way I, I am, and I like to be that way. And we had to have, I had to have many conversations with my girls about why they couldn't wear short shorts, why it was important to have their bottoms covered. and. I just said, you know, no one wants to see your bottom. Your bottom is a private part of you. We want to keep that hidden, not because there's anything inherently wrong with your bottom, but because we respect our own bodies, we respect other people, 
and this is why we do this. That was a simple conversation then. Since then, we've had, we've layered that as the girls have gotten over. Now they're teenagers and they're picking their own clothes or putting their own outfits together. I have to remind them, sometimes they've worn leggings and their shirts don't come down far enough. And they don't realize that they're developing, they're getting those little curves. And I just talk about them, I just mentioned, you know, I think you might not want to wa wear that because you don't want the boys staring at your bottom. And boys this age, they can't help it. You know, and, and middle school boys, everyone's all growing, everything. Let's have we have some respect for your fellow classmates. I'm not saying it's the boy girl's fault. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there is something about respecting others and helping them to respect you. The other thing is is that um simply telling them what modesty means instead of showing them what modesty looks like in your heart is not going to stick. We, we don't want to have a list of wear this, do this, and you're modest. Wear, don't wear, wear this and do this and you're not modest. No, that's not really what we want to impart with our kids. It's much more about, it's much more than how much skin is showing. It's about respecting your body and being careful about what you put in your mind. And also be very careful that you're not espousing racial, ethnic, or stereotypical biases in your conversation. You want your son and you want your daughter to respect everyone, even if we don't agree with them. So sometimes we talk about, occasionally um, my kids um, ask, because we live in a very multicultural area, you know, why some girls wear the headscarves, why they allow like no skin to be seen. So we talk about what that means to them, as far as we know, and how they can be respectful of that. They can be curious, because they're kids, but they can also be very respectful of that, and what that looks like, and how they shouldn't tease anyone who looks different, and how sh they should you know, encourage the girl to, to continue with that, if that is the conviction of her and her family, that, that that's what you need to do. So you... Um, for modesty, we're not going to be denigrating those who think what you wear or what you don't wear is a sign of a pure heart. We need to be careful about that. We need not to say, equate, girls who dress this way have a pure heart. Girls who dress this way do not. That is not what we want to convey about modesty. Allow questions. Our kids should be able to ask us questions. Like my boys, my girls asked me one time when they were little, well, why do boys not have to wear a shirt at the pool but girls do? fair question. I don't remember exactly how I answered it, but it was a fair question. I think I might have said something about how God made men and women's bodies differently, and in our society, we deem that that's okay to have their shirt off. Um, although most of the men in my family, um, because we have very fair skin and we don't want to get sunburned, wear swim shirts anyway, so th there you go. Um, you don't have to have all the answers. Sometimes you can say, I don't know. Let's find out together. Let's talk about it some more. Finally, don't overreact. Kids will try on different personalities, especially as they enter middle school and high school. They will say things they don't really mean, and they will express views and thoughts that are not their own, and they'll want to get tattoos or piercings or wear these weird clothes. Be careful about how you frame them. Ask clarifying questions to see what your child really means and why they really want to do this. Put your foot down if you don't want to pay for something. That's perfectly okay. But let's be careful not to assign modesty to outward appearance. Modesty is essentially what's going on in the child's heart. Let's keep it that way and let's work on that heart because as the Bible says, out of the mouth, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what comes out of a child's heart, what the child wears on the outside and does, is has to do with what's in their heart. Well, I hope this was helpful about modesty, especially as we enter the summer, where sometimes this convers these conversations become more important or more pertinent um, with, uh, with summer and hot weather. Um, but I hope you'll join me next week for another video blog on some assembly required. Thank you.